We shall be saved. Gracious Father, we thank you for this evening and this night. We thank you, Father, for 2011. By your grace, Lord, we have survived. And Lord, we are at this moment in your presence. Father, we thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your forgiveness. And Lord, we thank you about all for the Lord who continues to be a good shepherd in our lives. We thank you, Father, for this church and all the elders and all the children and youngins and all the children that are ministering to you and serving you. Father, I'm grateful to thee for giving me this opportunity to share your word, worthy to be called thy child. Give you praise and glory, honor and thanks for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name, amen. I was given uh, half an hour. <clears throat> but I would like to share a little bit about myself. As, uh, as uh, yeah, it works, Pastor, thank you. <clears throat> as you have uh, heard, that I'm from Chicago. Uh, I'm a born again believer. My wife, her name is Jiva, and uh, I have two lovely daughters, uh, Adriana, who's 18 years old, and also a 12 year old teenager, and uh, they're in Chicago and miss them. And I'm grateful to God for this opportunity to minister His word to His children. And also, I'm grateful to the elders that God invited me to administer his word. And as we look to the word of this evening, uh, I just request uh, one thing is that, I, I know we're all from India and some of, uh, most of us are from India, great. In church, we just leave our shoes outside, amen? Am I right? In church, we leave the shoes outside. So the shoes represents the world and let's remove the thought process and the world and leave it outside. Uh, humanly possible so that we can sit under the throne of God's throne and see how God wants to teach us today and what He wants to teach us, make an impact in our life and how we can be a uh, 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 blessing in His kingdom in the coming year 2012. Behold, I make all things new. Behold, I make all things new. He said to me, write for these words are true and faithful. This is a time of New Year that we celebrate as such. Some of us are wearing new clothes from Christmas gifts. And this is the time of uh, making resolutions. This is the time that we think past our past, all the things. This is the time that we ponder upon the blessings of God. This is the time that we see the mistakes of our past. This is the time that we look forward to new opportunities in the coming year. A hope of doing great things for God. How many of you want to do great things for God? I do. But does God trust you to do great things for him? Now what must we do so that we can align ourselves in God's word? So many times we take resolutions. Let me tell you something about a, a man who took a resolution to quit smoking. When he took a resolution to quit smoking, he asked his friend for a smoke. So his friend says, brother, I thought you quit smoking. Then he said, yes, I did decide to take resolution to quit smoking, but I'm in phase one. Phase one is, you know what that is? The brother said, what is it, phase one? He said, I quit buying cigarettes. <laughs> Get it? We want to do things, but we don't want to do the effort to carry through. Many of us want to take resolutions to lose weight. How many of 
we want to lose weight. I know we, we do that every year. We want to say, I want to be in good health. I want to be better health. I want to be, you know, I use my God. And I want to be more active and so forth. But God cannot do that which you don't want yourself to be done by God in your life. Let me share you something about myself. I've lost 25 pounds in the last year. The reason I'm sharing this is because I tried to do, I tried to lose weight myself. I lost 20 pounds by uh, ordering food and stuff, and that was not the means. I lost the weight. But I did it my way. But I put it back on. So I kneeled down on my knees and I said, God, I can't do it alone. I need your help. I want you to help me lose this weight. And I prayed and I looked to God's word. And God's word showed me, 2 Corinthians 3.16, it says, Knowing not that you are the temple of the Spirit of God, that the Spirit of God dwells in you, if you did not dishonor your body, you dishonor me. I said, oh my God, I know we, we look to the scripture many ways, but God brings the revelation in our hearts, in our minds, so that he shows forth by his mighty power that which we need. The same scripture, scripture has spoken to me in a different way. And I said, Lord, I want to honor you. I want to honor you. And when we align ourselves with the purpose of God to honor God, God in turn gives us his help so that we may honor him. And today I stand forward to say that God blessed me and he gave me a strength to lose that weight. So I stand forth here to say, praise be to God. He helped me because I asked his help. God cannot do that which we do not want. And many a times we want good health. Amen? It's part of our blessings of God. When we do things to this body, I'm giving an example. When we do things to our body and say, Lord, 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 heal me. Lord, 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 heal me. Lord, Lord, Lord. God can do. Amen? God can touch us. God can heal us. But we are working towards the vision and the purpose of God. And we ourselves are the enemy to the word of God. Practicality in thinking. We have to be living our life in a way that we should be aligning ourselves to God's word and his vision. God's word and vision. How many of you know about Joel Osteen, Pastor Osteen? You know the book? It's called Become a Better You. If someone has given you that gift, the book, sometimes we may say, oh, do you want me to be better? What's wrong with me now? How many of you know? I could be better even this coming year. Hallelujah. Amen. I could be better this coming year. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Could you repeat after me? I could be better this coming year. I could be better this coming year. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I could be better this coming year. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. See, we have to confess that which we want. We have to ask God His help, and then we have to line up with our life in a discipline in a way that God wants to help us. How many of you are children of God? All of you are children of God, amen? amen. Children of God are means they are followers of God, amen? They are disciples of God, which means they follow the discipline of God, amen? amen? So we ought to be people who follow God's word. In other words, we ought to be people that who has God's word. That we ought to be people who love God's word. We have to be people who abide by God's word. We ought to be people that are overflowing by God's word. And we ought to be people that are showing forth because of what God's word has done in our lives. Hallelujah. And if it doesn't happen, if it didn't happen last year, guess what? In Jesus' name, he will use you for his glory and for his praise. First thing, 2 Corinthians 5 chapter verse 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have made, been made new. Amen? I know this, this scripture is being used this time of the year the most. But how many of you know that if you are a believer, the scripture has happened to you the time that you believe that Jesus is the Lord of your life? When you are a 
believer, when you are a new creature, guess what? Just because you have become a believer, that does not mean that your thinking process has changed. The nature of sin hasn't changed. The thought process hasn't changed. In order for us to have this thought process change, that we have to make effort in the way that we have to think in regards to God's word. If God said for us not to do it, don't do it. If God said for us to be knowing God's word, if God said for us to be I know in India there's uh, three monkeys, right? Is that what it is? Right? <laughs> it's a simple, simple, simple thing. But guess what? When we abide by God's word, when we trust God's word, we can be sure that you have seen, in you, even in your life, that God can change all things in you. You know, God can do not just change people, God can do just change your circumstances. But he can change people. He changes the circumstances all throughout the word of God. You know, in the beginning, he created Genesis 1. He was a creator. He created new things. He is in a business of creating new. Amen? Amen. He wants things new. He is not concerned so much about the past. He is so much concerned of the presence and the present. And also, he's so concerned about the future. Because in Isaiah 43, verse 19, he says, for us to forget the things that which are behind, he says, he will remove them as far as east is from the west. So far will he remove our transgressions. Amen. He wants us to forget. Philippians 3, 13, Apostle Paul says, forget the things which are behind. Amen. Amen. You know, there's a reason that we ought to forget. You know, how many of you know that who reminds us of our, of our past? Pardon? Who reminds us of? Devil. Devil reminds us of our past. Because he doesn't want us to move from the present to future. He wants us to move backwards. If God says, let there be light, the devil says, let there be no light. In the beginning, when God was creating, in the creating business, the devil was not present. He was free to make everything that he wants. But the devil has come from being just like us and he hates us because God loves us. And he's in a business so that in a way, just the way he, he caused Eve to be deceived, from that moment on, he's in the same business now. We are in a battle and such that we are thinking that we are fighting with one another. We are thinking that I know more than you. We are thinking somebody's not doing something right. We are thinking it should be better, but guess, guess what? Devil causes us so that we will lose the fellowship of God and relationship with God, and he will cause us to be doing the purpose of God. John 10.10 10 says, Thief cometh but not to steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and life more abundant. When we live our lives, Yielding to that which causes the end result, the relationship is broken between brother and brother, brother and sister, husband and wife, and your relatives and stuff. Guess what? It is not a work of God. It is work of the devil. That's why the Bible says we should be quick to resolve our problems. We should be quick to think of what is happening here. We should be quick to apologize to each other. We should be quick so that we will not give place, devil the place, so that it will ruin that which God is doing, God has already done for us. Amen? Amen. Forgetting the things that are behind. Is it easy to forget? No. I want to be honest with you, it's not easy to forget those who stab you. You understand? Those who hurt you. Those who cost you pain. Those who cost you this anger. And then there's bitterness inside your heart and in your mind, not only just thinking about the person that they come across, but even someone mentions their name, then we have this, this anger that comes up. And guess what? And all these things that continues to build up in our lives, it cause our fellowship to be broken with not only brother to brother, but with God itself. And we continue to go on backwards. What God says is this. In me, you are a new creation. I have created you new. I have given you new birth. How many of you want a new job? 
Everybody wants a new job. You know why? Because old job, they know your mistakes. Old job, they know your weaknesses. Old job, that you know all these things that have happened, but you want a fresh job so that you can have a fresh start. But guess what? God says even today to each one of us that I will do a new thing. I will do a fresh beginning because God is in the business of doing everything new. Not just one thing, but we have to wait upon God's time. And in Jesus' name, God is ready to do this new thing. One thing is this. God is not going to do that which is not for His glory and for His praise. Always we have to be lined up with His vision. Is my life, Lord, honoring you? Is your will for me is to glorify your name? If this is where we are yielding, where we are leading to, where we are walking to, certainly God is going to help us in a way that He would cause the purpose of the kingdom of God to prevail. If it is to seek self-glory, if it is to say that, look at me, I think that's what the devil did. He thought that he was better than God. And man, you know what happens, right? I mean, you know, all these things we are reminded even today. But God says, I will do a new thing. You know how he does a new thing? He does a new thing in a person so that we, uh, when we trust in him to work that out in us, so that he says, when you forgive somebody their sins, they are forgiven. And when you forgive, you also will be forgiven. And when you ask God's help sincerely, He would help us in a way that the purpose of God may come forth. I'll give you an example. I know you remember Samuel, first chapter. Remember um, Hannah? She was a mother that was wounded by Penina, her other uh, uh, wife of uh, her husband. And she had children, and Hannah did not have children. And guess what? She sincerely went to the God and said, God, please help me. She cried. She went before God. And guess what? God did a new thing. He gave her Samuel. When God gave Samuel, guess what? She gave Samuel back to God, and she came to God rejoicing and praising Him. She was not bitter. She did not say, look, look, you were treating me bad, but look, now I have. She did not do that. She was not concerned about how somebody else treated her. Because it was a bad thing not to have a, not to have children. Isn't it? Isn't it? It's a bad thing not to have children. But God blessed her. And she was only concerned to give God the glory. Amen? And that's how he transforms people having focus in their lives so that God may receive the glory and the bitterness is taken away. God did new thing in Hannah's life. And there is a... There is a, another man of God, Joseph. You know Joseph? He was a person left to die. He was left alone as such to be killed or die. And he lost the relationship with his father, Jacob. And when he was become second man in Egypt, when God sent his brothers to him, he did not retaliate. Instead, he forgave them. He said that what you meant for me, God means for me to forgive you. Amen? So he forgave. Joseph forgave. And new thing was done in his life that he became a, a person to honor God. He was not bitter about the pain that he went through, but he knew that God worked it out, and he did not retaliate. You see how God works it out, and it's in the word of God that He takes care of His children so that we have forgiveness in our heart. We have forgiveness in our heart, and then children of Israel, God brought them to the Red Sea. They were put to shame in Egypt. God brought them across to the Promised Land. He took their shame away. They were ill-treated. They were slaves. But guess what? God made them, God chose them and blessed them to be a blessing for the whole, uh, whole world. It's a work of God. I'm 
just, I can have so many things that I can share right now. But these are the examples I can give. God is the God of uh, doing new things, but at the same time, He creates being new such that we have heart of God. Amen? He doesn't do anything in vain. How many of you know God's thoughts and our thoughts are totally different? We lay our vision so that we receive the honor and glory because what we have been taught in circumstances, but knowing God a little bit, that I would say even this day, that He can do much more than we could fathom, we could imagine. Hallelujah. At this time, I would like to share uh, briefly about myself. I'm my uh, eldest son of my father, John Wesley, in Sushina. And uh, I came from India. Uh, I was 18 years of age in Chicago. And uh, after I coming, coming here, um, uh, to make the long story short, I became a prodigal son because I thought the life was hard. I wanted to live my life the way all the teenagers do. And uh, I asked my dad, hey, can I have a party? And he said no. And uh, one thing led to another. And I was young and strong. And uh, I felt that, you know, if my father ever laid a hand on me, I'm strong enough to take care of myself. And that kind of attitude, and then I stopped going to college, I dropped out of school. And then I wanted to enjoy my life, and this is what I did. I said, like, hey, what better it is to work in a nightclub? So I worked in a nightclub for seven years. I was in the world, out of the kingdom of God. Even my parents, they, everybody gave up away on me. But guess what? My mother, I used to remember, and she was a prayerful woman. And all I, I hear from aunties is like, she used to cry and pray for her son. And once in a while, I used to help set up prayer meeting at home. And I said, Amma, I am going to put a part of my problem. I am going to put a part of my problem. I am going to put a part of my problem. I am going to put a part of my And I used to make fun of Okay, go ahead, go ahead, cry, cry, whatever you want. And my father, he was very humble, he was a prayerful man. And uh, I used to come from the club early in the morning and I say, hey mom, hey dad, they didn't used to say anything. But nevertheless, I didn't care. But guess what? One day, I'm sharing this because one day, I opened the door for my mom. I used to always be angry because I wanted, I want, they wanted me to get married. So I was always angry. I'm not going to do anything that you tell me to do, you know, as such. So I opened, opened the door for my parents and I saw my mother kneeling down with a Bible and on the, on the bed and praying. I opened the door and I looked and I closed the door and something happened to me. Something happened to me, I can testify to that. The God Spirit came upon me and it convicted me that of the sin nature and the nature that was against God that I was living after seven years. And nobody spoke to me. It's just that my mom was praying, my father was praying, and then the power of prayer is mighty. And today I stand forth as a minister of God. According to 1st Corinthians, according to the 1st chapter, Colossians 1st chapter 10 verse says, Truly in my life God has translated from me, from the kingdom of darkness. I was working in a nightclub, welcoming people to the nightclub to come and party and dance. And today he made me, by the grace of God, to come to the house of God to minister his good word. Because his word alone is, is awesome and wonderful and he can change and transform our lives. I took this New Testament Bible in my room. I went and I kneeled down and touched God's word. I, 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 I urge you, even today, my brothers and sisters, if there is God's word there, touch it. Hold it. Open it. Read it. Because it's good for you. God's word is awesome. It can transform and change our lives. Because I didn't know how wonderful God was. I kneel down with tears and say, God, please help me. I know this is your word. I know I'm at the end of the tunnel. I know I'm on the wall. Please help me. Guess what? Since then, he never let go of his hand. I let go of his hand, but guess what? He didn't let go of his hand. That day I said, Lord, if you help me, I will honor you. And I am here because of his grace. It's been some time, but guess what? It's just like yesterday. If he could save a sinner like me, I know he can do many things. Remember this, brothers and sisters. No matter how good that you are, only one sin will separate you from the kingdom of heaven. One sin. 
according to God's word. None are righteous. Our righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. It's in Christ's righteousness, God sees us perfect and as children of God. Awesome. He's a creating new business. And he says, if you belong to God, do not take it lightly. He gave his blood, every drop of it. He was put to shame. The pain that he felt of abandonment, uh, the burden that he took upon the cross, it is for me and it's for each one of us. And guess what? When we think that it's for the whole world, he did it. Guess what? We lose the salvation. He did it for me. He gave all his blood so that he could die upon the cross so that I could be called a child of God if I just believe in the work that was done upon the cross. He made me a new creation upon the cross. Even on the cross today, he makes us new. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. God likes to hear. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Even today, God can make things new. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you something. Second thing is in God's word, 1 Samuel 6 chapter, um, it's in my notes, but something wonderful happened. I'm just going to continue to share because we are short of time. Here it is. There was a man named Obadiah. God's word was in his house for three months. You know what God's word was? Mother's of the Ark of the Covenant. You know when David was bringing the Ark of the Covenant, the cart tilted, and a person named Uzziah touched the Ark of the Covenant, and instantly he died because God said that no one is to carry but a specific people, a priest that are ordained to carry the Ark of the Covenant, and David put it up on the cart. Second thing is, no one is to touch but a specific amount of people, but he touched, but guess what happened? If you don't listen to God's word, death can happen. Even today, if you don't abide by God's word, what are we calling it? A spiritual death can happen. We have to continue to live on according to God's word. Here it is. So he dies, and David gets scared, and he leaves the Ark of the Covenant. Ark of the Covenant is five feet long, two point feet, and a four feet long, 2.5, 2.5, two and a half, two and a half, you know, uh, length and breadth. So it's about that big. Because I know that our Indian ladies are about that, approximately that height and distance. And it was left in Obadiah's home. Guess what happened? His, God's word says, his, he, God blessed him and his family. The reason he blessed him is like that because what was present in the Ark of the Covenant? Three things were present in the Ark of the Covenant. Number one, two tablets. Two tablets were the law, the Ten Commandments. Amen? It's the Word of God. The Word of God was present in the Ark of the Covenant. The second thing is the jar of manna. The jar of manna represents the provision of God. And the third thing was Aaron's rod, which represents God's leadership. So in the Ark of the Covenant, in his home, in the middle of the room, God's, God was present, his word was present, his provision was present, his leadership was present. So every time Obadiah looked at that, he looked that God's presence was there. So he knew God's provision was there. He knew God's direction and leadership was there. So he was fearful of God and he, he abided by God and he, his eyes was upon God every day of every time. He could not do anything wrong and he wanted to do right by God that was present in there. You know, in our, we come from India and I know that uh, come, uh, at the time there was uh, uh, radios and TV were just coming. It was 30 years ago. But if you look at our homes, our furniture is turned to another, turned to another box. And this box, you know, that is television. This television causes our children. It molds our children's lives. It also causes our lives to be molded as such that we are accustomed to that which comes through the television. This is not anti-television message. But what I'm saying is like, we are directed 
instead of God's word, we are directed into the world system and what world has to teach. And we have more time to the television box than have time for God's word. I'm just giving you a comparing and contrast. If we ought to be blessed in this coming year, there is no exam by watching television. And of course, there's God's word comes across. There's nothing wrong with that. I, mean, I still watch it. Uh, 